It's me again, Dean Booker. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd take this opportunity while I got a small window, only for about an hour. Um, we've got 40 mile an hour westerlies. The tides are not perfect. Um, it's in between school runs, so I thought I'd come down to Panath and have an hour's casting. Why casting, you might say, that why not chuck a bait out? Well, we've had a few messages recently. Is it worth casting, you know, in between fishing sessions? Well, the answer is yes. Because, you know, the more you do something, the better you're going to get at doing it. You know, it's the same with a job. Plastering, tiling, plumbing. The more you do it, you know, the, the better you'll get. And i got to admit, coming back to sea fishing after almost a year off, last November thinking that I could pick my cast up again I was completely wrong you know I have struggled right the way through until January February I have struggled even though it might look good on camera it just didn't feel right as a caster and an angler you know when something's not right but only the last couple of weeks it's just clicked but then you might say all right so it's clicked so why are you practicing like I said the more you do it, the better you get. So I come down to Panath, bring the camera with me. Why not just film a few casts, you know? Some hints and some tips, if I can help one of you, then that's a video's a success, you know? So I've come down today with my Century T900. Absolutely love them. Eight ounces of lead. Because what I must say is if you use a six ounce lead, don't go practice casting with a six ounce lead. Go practice casting with an eight ounce. Use an eight ounce? Well, when you put your rig on, your bait on, it's not far off the same, do you get me? So if you use an eight ounce lead, practice casting, you go back down to a six with a bait, it's not gonna feel much different on the rod, if that makes sense. And also, what I like to do when I'm practice casting, I got an old reel. I got an old pen fathom 15, loaded up with 30 pound line. The mag is done tight, the spool tension is up, and also I took the bearings out and flooded the bearings with oil. And I mean flooded. Why that, you may ask? Well, I don't see any point in coming down here today and trying to hit. 200 250 yards when practicing what's the point if i'm going to go fishing tonight i'm not going to hit 200 250 yards with a bait i'll be hitting 120 130 140, 140. who knows who knows who cares right what i'm trying to say is there's no point you see people going uh practice casting with 7 ht sts and super tuned reels belting it out 200 250 yards into the sea and taking ages to wind in well, what's the point so i got a reel a pen fathom 15 slowed right down i'm not even hitting 60 yards you know i've got 30 pound sport mag is done tight spool tension is up and the bearings are slow you know what? i'll hit it as normal let it go through the air and it'll drop no more than 80 yards between 60 and 80 yards now i can do two casts maybe three casts by the time someone has belted out 250 yards because they're just taking ages winding in remember when you come practice casting it's all about technique and timing it's not about let's go practice let's go bang it 250 yards because that only matters when you're tournament casting you're not tournament casting. You're just practicing your swing, your technique. You know, I'm to blame. I've done it. Even like, even early this year, I was taking my casting specials down the docks. I'd smash them as far as I can. And you know, I was more concentrated on see how far I can cast rather than my cast itself. But as soon as I changed to this, it's completely changed my fishing, honestly. If you change from a fast reel to a slow reel where you know you're not getting distance, you start thinking about your cast more. Honestly, it's changed massively. So, 
I'm gonna go ahead and do a few casts, only a couple, and then see where we go. Got the first one away. It felt a bit ropey as the first one always does. But, you know, I didn't deck the lead. I got a nice long drop again. But if you look at this beach, it's pretty much a slope. And you might look at my, my, my length of my drop and go, you know, it's quite long compared to how it used to be. But um, that's the way I prefer it now. So literally, just my right hand. So let's get a few away. Remember, it's only practicing. You know, something I always aim to do when I'm practice casting is you've got to lower that tip. You have to lower that tip. You get a wicked height on it, it just feels a lot better. Yeah, that only went out about 70, 80 yards. You know, there it is already. Get out the weed. So you imagine winding in 250 yards of line every couple of minutes. Uh, not for me, not for me. All right, let's get some more. I'm a massive fan of lowering that tip. You've got to get that tip low. I find it causes more lead speed and that lead just flies around the outside of the tip. And you keep in contact with the lead the whole time. Fish on. <laughs> Yay, down to the right end. I'll show you now, when, when I swing it out, it comes back, that tip goes low. Be careful that one because I was going to empty the reel. <laughs> you see how I mean? You know, I got an incline behind me, it's obvious behind me. I got a, lot, a long drop. I can guarantee you I'm not going to do it because it's going to mess me up. But if I wasn't to lower that tip, I guarantee you that lead will climb really high behind me. I'll lose contact with the lead and I'll drive that lead into the ground. I got weed, have I? There are lots of weed out in front of me.
Yeah, so I'll do another angle. I'll do an angle now. I'll do the rod behind me so you can see the, the full effect. <laughs> See, this is the caster in me now. I'm thinking that second red boy out there looks a good 140, 150 yards out. I wonder if I can hit it with 30 pound line. <laughs> but I'm not gonna. Because it's all about timing, technique, and practice. It does not matter about distance. And you don't need to take an ST or a super tuned tournament reel to go practice casting. Let's give another one. You know, I must say, you know, I, put, I just performed half a dozen casts. I know power, just timing technique, um, and every single one is literally bang on, just slightly right or slightly left on that boy. None's gone left, none's gone right. And I've got a slight incline behind me, and I got a long drop. So, you know, what I found years ago when I used to have a high swing pendulum cast because the lead goes right up in the air if you hit it too early or lose contact with the lead you just dive it into the ground but if you perform a low arc so it doesn't go high it goes like above you but around it goes that way it doesn't go into the ground if it makes sense so you imagine something coming round on an arc it's got less chance of hitting the ground where something goes really high and then you, you time it wrong you pull it into the ground if that makes sense but the most important thing about all this casting is foot placement you know you can't build a house or you can't build a wall without foot placement or without without foundations you know so and not everywhere you can get good footing you know i was on friars point um a few weeks ago and right on the very end it's all like slopey jaggedy rocks and i've just found my foot even with super 
super track studs you do get a little slip because you know if you go to ledges with seaweed you know by here now i've got soft sand seaweed and a slope behind me i'm just getting away with it you know so just because you you're able to cast right and you know what you're doing the terrain that you're casting on might not be suitable so what i believe in with casting is that lead i've been guilty for it you know i've it I've hit the lead on the inside of the tip and got away with it. But would I got away with it if I had a cheaper rod? A, a, not, a rod not as well made as a Century or a Ziplex? Maybe not. Um, you know, not everyone casts perfect every day. You know, I gotta be spot on because I wake up tired, I'm grumpy, can't be bothered. We all have our bad days. Or someone sets up too close to you, casts over you, puts you in a bad mood, and then your casting goes peaked on. It's happened to everyone. It happened to me recently. So, um, but yeah, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to show you is, you all know about your foot placement, where your left foot needs to be the direction you're casting. But sometimes what I do is I find it hard to change my stance or my body to the direction I want to cast because I'm used to casting to a certain point so what I do this is me this might not work for everyone so my left leg is always facing 12 o'clock my right leg is always between two and three with a slight bend to to literally uncoil myself to grab a leg if I knock myself out so literally so i can uncoil do you get me get that tip low left arm up uncoil but if i want to cast left i shorten my drop because naturally it will go left because it leaves the tip quicker but if i want to cast straight or right i lengthen my drop because as my rod's coming around the lead is further behind me so it leaves the tip later do you get me so if I want to cast right or straight, I lengthen my drop. If I want to cast left, up tied, I shorten my drop. You know, so it works for me, it might not work for you. But like I say, if it hurts, if, if it hurts, <laughs> if it works for one person, they do as a result. But one of the things about getting the leg on the outside of the tip is when you swing it out, it comes back towards you. If you keep our left arm, lower your right, but it's, it's natural for me now, I, it's, it's weird trying to explain it, but swing it out, as it comes back towards me, I'm doing that, literally my, my right arm is anywhere from there to there, it's not back here like it used to be, my left arm comes up, and as I'm coming round, that straightens, I'm pulling, that is important, that is really, I'm trying to teach a mate of mine. He's got so much power in his right hand, it goes out there. But if he can, like, come round, and as he gets to there, just pull. You'll see in my videos, like, my right arm is up there, and my left arm is pulling in, literally. You create more bend, more whip. And you can really hear it when you finish the cast. You know, a lot of people just use right hand. You know, it works, but it could do better. So, swing it out, swing it back, lower the tip, and then literally, pull. That's it. So, but what I find is with a lead coming back towards me. As I lower that tip and push my left arm out, it's creating an arc, do you get me? Which is less chance of a lead diving into the ground. Like today now, we've got a slope behind us. And I'm getting away with it, with a drop just above, so what's that, a seven and a half, eight, nine, ten, eleven foot drop, eleven and a half foot drop. You know, when I used to high swing pendulum, my drop used to be down here because I was so slow. Literally, I had to wait for that lead to come all the way around. 
But yeah, we're getting pushed off here now. I won't be able to cast on those rocks. So the green stuff, it'd be horrible. It's just a short casting video. Um, just to give you a couple of hints and tips. And if it's worked, wicked. If it hasn't, it hasn't. Um, probably wasted your life for a couple of minutes. <laughs> so yeah, that's just a little casting video. Keep an eye on the v VMO YouTube channel. Plenty more to come this year. Lots of sessions, hounds, blondes, that type of stuff. Uh, if you like it, great. If you don't, watch EastEnders. <laughs> so yeah, so right, until the next time, don't crack off.